Hello, welcome to Chris's quick tips for Google Sheets. Google Sheet stores dates and time as a number and then displays the number as a date and time by changing the cell formatting. For example, this cell B5 equals the contents of the cell above it and equals the number 44050. I am now changing the formatting of this cell to the date format. And you can now see that the cell displays the date 7th of August 2020. Note, I live in the UK and use the date format date slash month slash year. I can change the formatting back to automatic and you can see that the cell still contains the number 44050. Time is represented as a fraction of one day or 24 hours. So, for example, 0.5 is half the 24-hour period, which is 12 hours. If I change the formatting of this cell to the time format, then you can see that the time is 12 hours, 0 minutes and 0 seconds, which is obviously midday and exactly halfway through the day. Another example is 0.1, which is 0.1 times 24 hours, which if you calculate it, is 2 hours and 24 minutes. So putting date and time together, the number 44050.1 represents the 7th of August 2020, 2.24am in the morning, as shown in B13 when the format is set to date time. If the time number is changed to 0.5, then the date and time is updated to 7th of August 2020, 12 o'clock midday. At the top of this sheet, you will see that I have put a note in yellow. Unfortunately, every time I create a new sheet, the locale is set to the United States. This means that dates are in the US format of month slash date slash year. Since I live in the UK, I want all my sheets to use the date format date slash month slash year. I have been unable to find a way of changing the default locale so that all new sheets are automatically set to the locale of the United Kingdom. I therefore have to remember every time I create a new sheet, I have to change the locale to the United Kingdom. I'm sure that Google will resolve this problem, but at the moment, my only recommendation is that every time you create a new sheet, the first thing you do is to change the locale to your own locale. I've put this reminder at the top of each sheet used in this video. Google Sheet provides four standard date formats that are available from the format number menu. There may also be some custom date formats that you have defined in the next section down in the menu. In this case, there is a long date format available. This sheet shows how the same number 44050.1 is displayed using each of these time and date formats. Cell C4 shows that the number with the cell format set to the default number format. The cells below C4 in the table all have a formula equals C4, so all the cells in the table contain the number 44050.1. If I temporarily change the formatting of all the cells in the table in column C to the automatic number format, then you can see that all the cells contain exactly the same number. If I then click undo, the format of each cell returns to the original date time formats. If you want to change a cell to one of the default time and date formats, click format number and then click one of the four default date and time formats. This has changed the number in C4 to the date format. I've just hit undo to return the cell to the original format. The date format is the UK date, month, year format because the locale for this sheet is set to the United Kingdom. This is a date format, so the decimal part of the number, 0.1 in this case, is ignored since this represents the time during the day. The date and the month both have leading zeros so that there are always two digits for the date and month and four digits for the year. The time format ignores the whole number and only looks at the decimal part of the number. In this case, the decimal part is 0.1 
which is 0.1 times 24 hours, uh, which as the calculation below the table shows is 2 hours and 24 minutes. The time format is two digits for the hours, a colon, then two digits for the minutes, a colon, then two digits for the seconds. The date time format looks at the entire number and displays the date and time that the whole number and the decimal part represent. In this case, it is 2.24 in the morning on the 7th of August 2020. The duration format looks at the entire number, but it does not interpret the whole number as a date. It displays the number as the number of hours, colon, number of minutes, colon, number of seconds. The calculation shows how the number of hours and minutes are calculated and then displayed in the duration format. The format labelled Friday the 26th of September 2008 is a long date format which includes the day of the week and the month spelled out in full and not abbreviated. It also does not have any leading zeros for the date. It is also possible to define your own date format. Click on format, then number, then more formats, then more date and time formats. This opens the custom date and time formats window. You can see a list of formats in the scrollable window. If the format you want is not in this list, click on a format that is close to your required format and then change that format. Let's click on this long date and time format. The box at the top now includes all the elements of this format along with the text. You can click on any of the elements to see the list of all possible options for that element. For example, the options for the month are either a one or two digit number or either a one or three digit abbreviation of the month or the full month name. You also have the option to delete the element from the format. If you want to add an element to the format, click the down arrow and click the element that you want to add. Note that the new element will always be added at the end of the number format, regardless of where the cursor is located. So you may need to delete some elements and then add them again after you have added the new element. Finally, click on the element to select the required variation of the element and then click on apply and the cell is now formatted with your own custom date and time format. Suppose you want to enter a date into a sheet, then you could of course enter the date number into a cell and then convert that number to a date. In reality, you will almost certainly not know the date number for the date that you want to enter. So Google Sheet makes it easy for you by allowing you to enter a date in one of the standard date formats. It will then convert the date into a number, store the number in the cell and change the formatting of the cell to the date format that you used when entering the date. So if you type a date in the format date dash month abbreviated to three letters dash year, it will convert the date to the number 44050 and then format the cell to the date dash month dash year format. For information, D5 shows the number stored in C5. You could also enter the date in the format date slash month number slash year. Once again, the date is converted to the number 44050 and then the format of the cell is changed to date slash month slash year format. However, you must be cautious when entering dates in this format because you must remember to change the locale to the United Kingdom as per the reminder in yellow at the top of this sheet. Uh, this avoids any date or month confusion. To demonstrate the month confusion problem, let's temporarily jump to a completely new sheet. Let's suppose that when I set up this sheet, I forgot to change the locale to the United Kingdom so that the locale is still set to the United States. So if I enter a date using the date dash month abbreviation dash year format, 
it is still correctly converted to the number 44050. However, if I enter a date using the date slash month slash year format, you can see that the date number is 44020. It's not 44050. This is because the date is interpreted as a US date format and is therefore interpreted as the 8th of July 2020. Unfortunately, there is no error message or warning because 7 slash 8 slash 20 is a valid date in both US and UK date formats. But unfortunately, they are different dates and that is going to cause a problem if you are not aware of it. Hence the reminder in yellow to set the locale to the correct location every time you create a new sheet. Entering a series of dates that repeat at a regular interval is easy using the autofill tool. Enter the first two dates in the sequence and select these two cells. Put the mouse over the fill handle, which is at the bottom right of the blue selection box. The mouse will change into a cross. Click the mouse button and hold it down while you drag over the range that you want to autofill. Unfortunately, it also copies any formatting, which you can see because my bottom border has disappeared in cell B28. This column is a simple repeat every day. However, you could repeat every week or seven days or even every four days. The autofill will recognize month names and autofill with the name of each month. The autofill is intelligent and will start in January again after December. Autofill also recognizes the three digit month name abbreviations and will also fill with the month name abbreviations. Autofill will also do this for days of the week as well. Since dates are numbers, you can do simple manipulations of dates using simple maths. For example, if you want to know the date 40 days after a specific date, then a simple addition will give you the date. Column G shows the formula that is in the cell highlighted in pale green. You can also calculate the date a number of days before a specified date by performing a subtraction. This example shows that additions and subtractions take into account the variable number of days in a month. You can also find out how many days are between two dates by subtracting two dates from each other. The result of subtracting one date from another date is the number of days. One thing you need to be aware of is that depending on the precise question, subtracting may not give the correct answer. For example, if you leave to go for a long weekend's holiday on Friday morning and return home on Tuesday evening, you are away for five days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. So you have to add one to the subtraction to get the correct answer to the question about how many days you are going to be away. Because dates are numbers, you can also multiply and even divide them. However, I don't believe that this has any real world use. Multiplying the 7th of August 2020 by the 11th of August 2020 gives a big number that is outside the range that Google Sheet will display as a date. However, this did get me wondering, what are the limits for dates in Google Sheet? I've never hit the date limits in practice, but for information, the furthest date in the future is 31st of December in the year 99,999. I initially thought that the oldest date would be the date with a date number of zero, which is the 30th of December 1899. However, it turns out that negative date numbers are allowed. I then guessed that 1st of January in the year zero would be the furthest back in the past, but it is actually possible to go back to the 1st of January one year before Christ, BC. Google Sheet has a strange way of displaying one year BC. However, I won't worry about this because I'm sure that I will never need to use it.